So welcome. My name is Stephanie Benedetto. Welcome to the Three Principles Global Community Webinar. The Three Principles Community, or 3PGC, is a nonprofit organization committed to bringing an understanding of the three principles as introduced by Sydney Banks to people throughout the world. And our special guest today is Maria Eilif Wood, and she is going to be speaking about a caged mind how a 3P understanding freed her mind and took her life in a whole new direction. Just a little bit about Maria. She is a registered 3P GC practitioner who has worked with leaders and coaches using the three principles for several years. During the pandemic, Maria wrote and self-published her second book, which led to her setting up a publishing company, and she now helps people to write and publish their books. Whether she's helping them to start writing, edit their work, find a publisher, or publishes their book for them, she's still doing the same thing she's always done as a coach, pointing people back to their inner wisdom. So without further ado, I turn this over to you, Maria. Welcome, Hi. and thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, I didn't know you were going to say that at, at the end about um, always pointing people back to their inner wisdom, because it's just spooky to me that the like we just talked about that just be, or I just talked about that just before we we started um I love it when that kind of thing happens because it it the thing that it shows me is that there's there's something going on um that we don't truly understand that shows that we have a connection and that we're connected somehow you know when you when you're talking to somebody and then you have a thought and then they say the same they say the words that you've just said um and I think, oh, I, I, I love, I love that when that happens. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm publishing a book. Um, hopefully, it'll be available in September. I kind of hoped it would be available um, to pre-order right now. Um, But as much as I had a plan to um, have it published by now, I also trust that the fact that it's not ready to pre-order right now is perfectly okay. Like I don't, um, I don't beat myself up for having missed my deadline of having it available to pre-order by the 14th of June so I could tell everybody who listened to this webinar to, um, to click on this link and pre-order it. Um, and that's very different for me compared to, um, you know, several years ago before I, before I came across um, the three principles in that um, I, I didn't realise the extent to which um, I beat myself up, um, you know, throughout, you know, throughout my whole life, basically. And it's only it's only now when I see how little I beat myself up that I realize how much I used to do it before. Um, and anybody who saw me, anybody who looked at my life would think I had a, um, a really good life. You know, I had a I had a business of my own, really successful house of my own um, in latter years I got married I have a wonderful um, relationship with my husband and still do um, but on the inside like it was it, it was not a good experience for a lot of the time um, you know I had probably I think it was 2005 um, I had three and a half months off work with anxiety and depression and and lots of people have had that that doesn't you know it's nothing nothing unusual um but i had i had such a lot of stuff going on inside of me that on the inside even though i'd got all this or what looked like successful business and successful life I was always scared that it was just going to disappear in an instant. Like I didn't deserve it. Um, so if I didn't deserve it, I wouldn't, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to keep it. 
Um, and so I was constantly striving, constantly striving. So, so like having a, um, a deadline for a book, like in, in previously, if, if the deadline, even in the lead up to the deadline that I'd kind of set myself, if I, if I hadn't achieved it, I'd have so much going on in my mind about, um, you know, what a failure I am and, you know, how terrible I am and, you know, nobody's going to want to read it anyway. You know, I have loads of, loads of thinking about it and whether I should be doing it or shouldn't be doing it and, um, you know, what I should have been doing in order to, to meet the deadline. And, and so having a deadline come and go without having much thinking about it is a is a is a very different experience for me compared to um you know to, to several years ago um and i think lots of people are the same i think lots of people on the on the outside look like they have really really successful lives but on the inside have loads of stuff going on and um I'm, I'm kind of being quiet because I can feel some of it still. <laughs> I can, I can, I can feel some of the um, kind of the, the residue of, of some of that right here, right now. But it's it it's got a different quality of feeling to it. So. Um, I want to. I want to come back to. I want to come back to a, a kind of a heartfelt place, instead of paying attention to this noise that's going on in my head. And the the thing that I'm really noticing at the minute is this noise doesn't have any words with it, but it has the the, the residue of the of the feeling. So I know that I'm caught up in something right here, right now. Without the 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 words to go with it so like I can't tell you what the thinking is going on right now that is creating this feeling in me but I know what I'm experiencing right here right now and, and I and I recognize it and it's not a big deal I'm okay I'm okay with it and that's different as well like it's really different um and and one of the things that that's um pointing to for me is is the realization that you know we talk about the role of thought in our lives and we we kind of think of it as you know the thinking that we have and when we talk about the thinking that we have it feels like you know there's words to it and for me this is really pointing to the energy the energy of thought that um I, I don't know the specific content that could be associated with thoughts that create this feeling, but there's a, there's a feeling that is being created. It sounds more like a whistling in my ears than it does anything else. <laughs> <laughs> But, but one of the things that um, has become really clear to me through writing this book is how wisdom works is not um, a straight line. So um, in, in writing this book, the book is, is kind of, it's not in a chronological order. Like it's not that, 
you know, this happened and then this made my life better and then this happened and this, then this made my life better. One of the things that I've really seen is that, you know, there's, there's something in uh, Sid talks about crossing, crossing the boundaries of time and space. And what I, what I see when I, when I written this book is how um, the, the insights are like a, um, the insights in my life, I can only speak about my life, but the insights in my life have been more like a, um, a, a join the dots image, you know, like you have a, a, a join the dots and you've got all of these dots and you don't know what the picture is until you've, you've kind of gone all over the page like this. And then all of a sudden a, a, a gorgeous lion has appeared in the, in the page. But before you started, it was just a, um, a whole load of, of dots on the page. You, you don't make the connections. And um, in, in writing this book, I've seen how something that happened, you know, maybe 20 or 30 years ago, feels like it's connected that something with happened, that happened, you know, just last week, maybe. And yet it's all it's all linked with the same with the same thing. And so so through writing this book, I was writing about all different pockets of my life and wrote about them in a completely disjointed way, in the same way of, of you know, all these dots. And then started forming the book and, and pulling all of these all of these stories together and, and linking the stories because a story that, that happened a long time ago and then a story that happened more recently, but was all part and parcel of the same insight. It, it's almost like the insight started a long time ago. It didn't just, you know, I, 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 you know, over the weekend, I really feel like um, I've seen some things that are really going to make a difference to me going forward because I felt the impact of what I've seen. I don't have the words for it at the minute of, of those things that I've seen. And going back, I, I, you know, at a time when I had no clue what an insight was, when I look back now, I see that I was having insights that were making a difference. And, and, and it's almost like the first part of the insight happened here and the second part of the insight happened here and the third part happened here. But this third part might have been actually earlier than that. And it's just all opened up in a, in a way that I don't have any, any control over. And it's just been really, really gorgeous to experience, to experience in writing about them and going back and experiencing those things and, and re-deepening the, the insight. It's like writing the book has deepened some of the insights that I had before. So when... One of the stories that I've written about was the, my very first 3P insight. And, um, and I, I didn't realize the magnitude of it at the time because in my life, you or I would kind of got conditioned into having an experience achieving something maybe, you know, achieving a promotion or a, achieving an exam and all that kind of thing. And like, once you've achieved it, it's like, okay, that's done, next. And, and no, no thinking whatsoever about what I've achieved and what it's meant or, or no celebration, all of that kind of thing. And so my, my first 3P insight um, was exactly the same as those experiences. So I knew that I'd experienced something. I knew that I'd experienced a, a, some kind of shift that had opened something up within me. And then I forgot about it. It's like, oh yeah, thank you very much, Dickon. That was great. Next, you know, where's the, where's the next one gonna come from? And um, as I wrote about that experience, and I, I didn't plan to write about it. So if you, if you look at all of the stories that I've written about in, in the book, I never planned to write these stories. Karen 
um, knows me from um, Jules's writing class. So I would I would be writing my exercises for class and these stories all showed up. And one of the stories that showed up in my writing was when I had this first experience. And in writing about it, I went back into the original experience and I experienced the magnitude of it. You know, one of, one of my pieces um, in the book is I want to be enlightened. I want what Sidney Banks had. I want what Eckhart Tolle has. I want what the Dalai Lama had. I wanted this massive experience when I saw the way that life worked in an instant and my life changed overnight for the better. Not realizing that I'd had that experience. And, and what happened was like, because of the way that I'd been kind of got into the habit of living my life and thinking about life, you know, something happened. I didn't understand what insights were at the time, didn't realize the magnitude of it, had this experience, thanks, great, off you go, thanks very much. And then when I look back over the time since that insight, I see how my life was impacted, even though I didn't know how deeply impacted it had been at the time and that's why like this weekend I know I've had an, an insight that I can't put words to that I feel I felt the impact of it in the moment and it's going to be a while before I see the evidence of of that insight that at some point in the future I'm going to be in a situation and I'll go oh this is different and it's and it won't be something that I've thought about or or practiced or written about or planned in advance. Um, I'm just going to be different. And then what happened with because that was one of my early pieces that I wrote for this book. Bear in mind, you know, I started this. It's, it's four years ago. This book has been in the in the making. Um, as I started writing about other things. What I then realized is that I've been having insights my whole life, but nobody, nobody had said to me what an insight was and what a difference an insight can make in your life. Nobody had, had kind of pointed me in that, in that direction. So as, as I'm writing the book, I'm writing about things that happened, you know, at all different times in my life before 3P, and I realized like, oh my God, yeah, that insight changed, changed my life in that moment in, in one aspect. You know, I think of a, um, you know, there's one, one story that I tell about, you know, I'm, I wasn't very playful. I was a very serious child. And, um, you know, play wasn't, wasn't really something that I got involved in, especially not as an adult. And I was on holiday with some friends of mine and um, we were on the we were on a, a beach. It was kind of October, November time. And one of them had bought a kite, and the, the one said, "Right, okay, we'll, we'll go on the beach, and we'll go and we'll go and fly the kite." Well, like I'm going, no, thank you, no, I can't think of anything worse than going and and um, flying a kite. And so they all went off. I said, no, "I'm going to sit and read my book. I like reading my books, and I'll, I'll sit and read my book now." I, I didn't even know that I was having an insight and nor did I feel the impact of having that insight, but I was moved by an insight. So I'm sat reading my book, very, very, I'm very happy with the book. I've always, that's been like my sanctuary, I've always read a book. And I could see them running and playing outside and they were really having a lot of fun. And part of me, some part of me wanted to have the fun. And, and part of me, some part of me said, go out there and have fun. It wasn't a conscious thought. Like I don't, I don't remember say the, the part of me going, you know, go and have fun. 
I just I sat and you know I was sitting there with my book and I was moved to go and have fun and and I see now different other dots connected with that that have made a difference in my life where fun is, is part of my life now being playful is is part of my life now um which is really different to a, another experience that I described very early on um where I'm, I'm too scared to play So, so writing this book has really helped me to, to see how it, it's not a 3P understanding that has made a difference in my life. What the 3P has given me is a language to understand better what was already there in my life. And so, you know, I, I kind of talk about after I came across the three Ps and before I came across the three Ps. But what's, um, you know, I've got, I've almost got the written evidence that I knew something about this before I came across the principles. Because I wrote a book, literally, I handed the manuscript in the, the week before I went to see Dickon for the first time. I didn't know anything about the principles when I wrote this book, this first book. The first book's called Coaching Presence. And in that book, I talk about we've all got an invisible coach within us. We've all got a source of inner wisdom within us. None of us are broken. We don't need fixing. So, you know, these, these things I wrote before I knew anything about the principles. I'd not, I'd not read a word. My husband had been, he'd been, he'd been reading this stuff while I was writing my book. And basically, he was a widow. He'd got to find something to do with his time because I was just spending 14 hours a day writing. And he kept saying, oh, you've got to read this book, Michael Neal's Inside Out Revolution. You've got to read this. I'm going, no, no, no. I'm writing my book. That's it. Oh, I've got to tell you about this. No, no. I'm writing my book. I'm crack on with this. So then he says to me, there's this guy called Dick and Bettinger coming over from America. And I don't really know who he is, but he seems to be somebody in the 3P world. Um, will you come and see him? I says, when is it? He says, it's this, this week, this date. And I said, right, OK, it's the weekend after I hand my manuscript in. I'll do anything. So we're, we're driving along to, the, to this place in Essex to see Dickon. And, uh, and I said to him, this better not undermine my book. I didn't know what we were, what I was going to be hearing about. I didn't know. All I knew is that I had been reading this stuff and it was really interesting. I didn't know a dicky bird about it. We still hadn't talked about it. So we went to this, this hall in Essex and we booked for two days and it was a three-day event and we stayed for the three days. Um, and, you know, <laughs> there was a point and, and I remember Ash being really surprised. So, I don't know, maybe the end of the second day, it might have been the third day, I can't remember exactly. Dickon says, as he, as he does, um, you know, does anybody want to, to share anything that they've seen? Or, and I was like a jack in the box. I was like, up on my feet. Oh, I've seen something. It's bawling my eyes out. Not really appreciating that, you know, all of that, what, all of that emotion that was coming out of me, all of those tears that were coming out of me were all part of the, the insight and the shift. And, you know, this huge shift that was happening, which I really felt in the moment. And then, you know, that was it. Um, you know, sit down. OK, now get on with my, my life again. You know, I've done loads of loads and loads of courses in the past. You know, I know what it's like. You know, you, you can you learn something and and then, you know, you learn the next thing and then you learn the next thing. And, and I suppose for me, what the three principles was, was um, it was so different to anything that I'd, I'd heard before, even though a lot of the other stuff is, is kind of pointing in the same direction, but they're kind of missing. It's kind of missing it. And it's a bit like what I was doing in my work before I came across the principles and how I work with people now. Um, it's kind of like with all of the other stuff that, that uh, not all of it, sorry, 
um, some of the, the stuff that I was learning and, and, and the courses that I was going on. Um, it was under the understanding that um, it was whatever the interventions were that were making the difference. And, and with the 3P understanding, what it made me realize is that it's, it's not the interventions that we have with people that makes the difference. It's the connection and where we're coming from and where we're pointing to. And I, I do want to open it up because I really love having conversations with people, but um, there's a couple of things in, in here that I just wanted to, um, to talk about. So um, you all know this book, don't you? Yes. Um, so linking it with a, a cage mind, it's like on page 72, um, he says, at times we are captivated by our own ego and become prisoners of our contaminated thoughts. And, you know, thought it, that it just fits in so beautifully with the, with the idea of a, a caged mind. Because I think when I first read that, how I read it was like, you know, we get, you know, we have, you know, sometimes we have an inflated idea of ourselves um, and we have this self-created idea and that um, self-created identity. Um, but it's really obvious. Like it's, it's, it seems like it's a really obvious thing. And then we get, in, instead of using the word captivated, it's like, I would say like enamored by it. And, and, and what I've realized through reading the book is that captivated is absolutely the perfect word. You know, it's, I think Sid, Sid's words are always the, he says, you know, if the words don't work for you, change it to something else. And so for me, it was like, yeah, change it to something else. But then I come back to his word is, is absolutely right, because a lot of the stuff that was going on was, was captivating me in a, in a cage, but captivating me in a, as in becoming a prisoner. It's like I was a, a prisoner of my thoughts. And, you know, like how we started today, um, or how I started today and then started to feel that those those feelings that I didn't necessarily have words for didn't know the content of the thinking that was creating my, my, that feeling but I was feeling the cage I was feeling the being a prisoner of the thinking that I had going on despite the fact I didn't know what the thinking was because it's kind of old stuff and, and like I, I don't I don't dig into that and find out what it is because I, I, I know what it is and I know that it's 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 not a big deal anymore but that's what it does it it it, it kind of closes you down and um and makes you feel like you're in a cage and I didn't realize that that's how I was living my life for, for many many years of my life is living it in a in this this closed way even though when it, on on the outside it looks like I'm you know I'm living a really really good life and I, and I was living a good life but I didn't know I was living a good life and I think this is one of the things I've really seen is that because I don't focus anywhere near as much on all of that negativity because one of the things that I realize is that um I'm having much more of a good life than I thought I was. Um, and the more I paid attention to, to having a good life, the better my life has, has got and all of that has got easier. So it's like when, when we talk about ego captivating, it's like ego is, it, it's a really, for me, it's, it's, it, it's got much more subtle. It's not gone, it's much more subtle. Uh, it's not so obvious because I'm more switched on to it. I'm more, it, you know, it can't do the obvious stuff to me anymore because I'm really switched on to that. So it's 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 more subtle. Um, I don't know if I'm making any sense whatsoever. I feel like I've gone a bit around the the houses and stuff. So how about does anybody want to? talk to me about anything 
<laughs> ask me a question or <laughs> make an observation. I don't know, whatever you want to say. It's such a small group, it's really nice for that. Yeah, so you can uh, raise your hand on the screen if you go down to your reactions button and select that and raise your hand and then Maria and I can see you easily. Or, you know, we are intimate, so you could probably just unmute yourself. I'm going to say, speak, just, but, you know, <laughs> just go. <laughs> hmm. I'll just raise my hand like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ria, um, I, I think what is so beautiful is trying to describe something that's indescribable. And I mm -hmm. think you did a damn good job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Karen. <laughs> and, and I'm I'm like you in the sense that all my insights were things I never saw or talked about or did anything with. I never knew. And that's the biggest, I think, insight for a lot of people is that they realize that they are there all the time. Mm. We just were not aware. And so it's kind of like watching you describing this is like trying to describe to someone how can you describe something you can't explain? And part of it is that you see that you see different, that you are different, Yeah. you know? And so it does kind of unveil itself, whether or not you like it or not, it's going to let you see something at some point, even if you have no idea. Yeah. When I used to listen to Sid, I would find myself in tears sometimes and not have any idea. I was not, I stopped listening for the words. But I do have to say that since I've been taking the writing classes and I see what wizardry you guys, the words, it's just like you say, it's something that's before our thoughts where we think yeah. we're clever. There's something, there's something totally different there where you're like surprised. And that's what insights are always doing is surprising us, I think. Yeah. So yeah. great job, I think, describing <laughs> I'm <laughs> doing my best. <laughs> and and I, love, I, I love that as well, what you just said, Karen, because what happened for me over the weekend um, was I, I did have a lot of tears and somebody came up to me um, in the break and said, oh, you know, are you OK? You know, it's, I can see that you were really upset. And, and to try and like, I didn't see myself as being upset. Like and I, I knew I wasn't upset, and 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 um, I just knew that it was all linked to whatever it is that was going on inside of me. Um, was something being released? I love the idea that well, it's not even an idea, is it? That there's something in tears that is is healing. There's like healing chemical, isn't there? In there, I, I love that idea that. When when we when the tears are coming, it's it's something is washing away with it, and that's what I felt like something was washing away from, washing out of me. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Thank you so much for this opportunity, and it's it's lovely to hear your reflections, Maria. Um, and I had quite a moment actually when I saw this being advertised. I think I did comment on your post. It's the first time ever I have seen a book cover on any social media where I've in an instant looked at that book cover and thought that represents my life and that represents the coaching that I do and that represents my signature presence for why I coach mm -hmm. and that so thank you because that was quite an incredible moment for me and I you know I suppose my question because I am curious so I'll, I'll ask it and um you know I, I would love to understand you know sort of you know how involved in that you know image on the cover were you and you know where does that come from I suppose um because you know obviously I I gained my own insights and I had my own reflections like you said no words just looking at the picture yes um but uh, yeah so I'm, I'm curious I'm curious about kind of you know how how connected do you feel with that image representing what's in the book well I think it's perfect <laughs> Um, so, and I'll tell you how it how it came about because for me this is this is part of the the way that I trust in life now. So, from a very early stage, I knew that I wanted the cover to have a birdcage on it, 
I've got that image in mind right from very early. And I'd Googled a few times and, you know, searched for, for images and, and nothing um, jumped out at me. And I was in the Lake District with my husband and um, we saw this, another painting, not this one, we saw a painting in an art, an art gallery and it's a picture of a woman dressed in red walking along a path with a book in her hand and butterflies coming out of hand. It's a lovely, lovely painting. So I said, buy it. Said, okay, I don't need telling twice. So, so I bought this uh, painting, brought it home. And um, I decided to Google the artist. And while I was Googling her, her work, this image came up and I just got goosebumps, completely got goosebumps. I thought that, that is the cover for my book because it depicts so perfectly what, yeah, what, what I'm trying to, to say. And thank you for the posts. I remember your posts, Susanna. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for being yeah, here. No, no, thank you. And, and sorry, if, if I may, not to hog the time, but you know, the, the other reflection I'd share is, it was very interesting having seen that cover. I, for the first time, very consciously in my day-to-day -day coaching in a technology context, I applied invisible coaching mode, but I tried a different approach. So I actually said to people, I'm going to try the coaching mode that Maria Illifwood talks about. And of course, a lot of the people I'm working with in that context, you know, they're, they're not coming at it from a coaching angle. You know, they're unaware of a lot of this stuff. Yeah. But the idea of having an invisible coach, you know, really freaked them out. You know, and the fact I was kind of saying intentionally, I'm going to be quiet for a change. I'm literally just going to be listening and just absorbing everything. I found even as I was kind of connecting with the fact I was trying with that approach, I was thinking of the cage as well in terms of me consciously putting myself in the cage during the listening, which I, I know is a different angle on thinking about being yeah. caged. But it was just interesting how that kind of, you know, what you'd written about in coaching presence and then the reality of the image and the context it all just came together in a really like unexpected way it was uh, it's definitely kind of pushed me out my comfort zone yeah, <laughs> with yeah. that in a good way <laughs> and I, I love what you just said there Susanna about it being in a really unexpected way it, it's like that's that's the thing it's like the the insights the, the like as coaches we we are with people that's we want people to have insights but when we realize that when, or when we know that insights come come completely left the field like for me for me that's been liberating in in the work that I do because I'm I don't I don't need to worry about what I'm doing as such to to help the person because the insights are not going to come from me mm. and and you know I, I know people that I've worked with who have had insights that have seemed to be completely unrelated to anything we've been talking about but it it's absolutely perfect for them. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. No, thank you. I'm just, I'm just going to go off camera. I need to plug my laptop in so I don't disappear. <laughs> no, <go laughs> well. um, and and all, the, the other thing, just um, saying a bit more about that, is when I wrote Coaching Presence, um, you know, I was still in, this is what I mean, it's like I look, I'd, I'd written a book, I'd published a book, um, and, I, and I'd said all these, all these, you know, really good things in this book. And yet I still had all of this stuff that was going on that was, you know, publishing that book was a, um, an ordeal in a way, you know, actually putting it out into the world was an ordeal because what the hell is anybody going to think of it? You know, this is just me putting, you know, my thoughts out into the world. And it was really scary. But the other thing that I really see when I reflect back on is how, regardless of all of that thinking, something was still pushing me to do it. And, and I, didn't, I didn't know where that book was going to lead me to. And I could never have predicted in a million years that it would lead me to here. Like that, it, this, this where I am today is just, was just not on my cards. Um, and that, that just, um, I, I just want this one uh, to be this one because this is so, so true for me. It's like, no matter which path you take, 
the wisdom you seek will always be found within the depths of your own consciousness. And, and one of the things that I really saw again through, through writing these and writing some of the different stories is how even when wisdom was shouting at me loud and clear a path and, and I decided to ignore it because, you know, and I, in particular, I jumped into a relationship that wisdom was saying to me, don't do it, don't do it. This is you definitely don't want to do this. But, you know, I went ahead and did it anyway. One of the things that's got really clear to me is like wisdom wasn't bothered. Like if we think about it, you know, like I was getting the message from from somewhere within me not to jump into this relationship. And like that wisdom didn't abandon me because I'd ignored it. Like wisdom then guided me through the 11 years. <laughs> no, another, I was with him 11 years. So another eight years of being with that person that, you know, knew right from the beginning. I, 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 I felt like, I'd, uh, uh, and that's a whole other story as well, because, you know, I wouldn't be where I am now if I hadn't have been in that relationship. So um, what's, you know, what's right and what's wrong. There isn't really a, a right or wrong path. And that's what this says, like, it doesn't matter what path you take. And in hindsight, it might look like the wrong path, but the wisdom still, still guides. Like it helped me to navigate through that relationship to get through to then, you know, come the other side of it and, and now really be blessed with a really beautiful relationship. But no matter which path you take, Wisdom will always, will always guide us. Georgia, did I see your hand up earlier? So you mentioned something and I wanted to put my hand up at the time and I thought, oh, we're not allowed to ask questions yet. And it's, uh. <laughs> God, it was a moment when you said something about, it was something about energy that you'd seen and it was like I literally said to her, oh oh <laughs> inside obviously and, and then by the time you said open it up it had gone and I thought maybe it'll come back to me or maybe it's already had the impact that it needed to have on you quite possibly yeah because I mean one of the things that I really see in coaching is like um, I'm sure if, if people are coaches, they'll they'll recognise this. It's like somebody, the person will be talking, they'll be saying something, and something will come to you, like something will come to me, and I think, oh, you know, that might be a good thing to say, but but the opening isn't there for for me to to say it. And then it, it, what I used to do in the past was hold on to that. Right, I'm going to hold on to that question because as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to ask it. Now what I see is that. If at some point in the conversation it's going to be right to ask that question or or say whatever it that was that I said, I'll remember it. Mm. And if it's not needed anymore, I won't remember it. And it's really clear to me now. So and so so things like that. Like if you've if you've had a moment where you've ah, there's a good chance that there's, there's something's happened inside of you. It doesn't need to. You don't need to have the words for it. It doesn't need to be spoken. No, it's just oh wow and it's so fascinating also from the point of what you say I mean probably like half us here I've been as you know been doing it with Jules and done an advanced one or whatever and my final piece last week was all about creation and how I'm playing with God in a sandpit and I have absolutely nothing on what we create. The sandcastles can fall apart and I just get to recreate them. Such freedom around creation, whether it's painting, whether it's writing, whether it's building garden, absolutely nothing on it. And yet I'm a coach too, having done Michael super coach and whatever, and it isn't happening. You know, I keep plugging away and it's not growing. And I had the most fascinating moment earlier this week where it was a case of what I hadn't seen before, my freedom around 
creativity in writing and all of this was just the case oh yeah just playing through me and I have nothing on it and what comes through and then saying oh hold on I think I exist when it comes to building a coaching practice but if I don't exist there why all of a sudden do I exist there I either do exist in all of it or I don't exist in all of it and it's so fascinating the way we don't see where, as you say, our ego is until we go, oh, my God, I can't be one or t'other. I, I can only be one or other. And if I know which I am, then I don't get to decide as and when it starts or doesn't start or whatever. And that was really liberating. And to see actually so much more possibility all of a sudden do you know I could be a dress designer I could be absolutely anything because anything is a possibility if I don't think I'm doing it mm. yeah I, I love that Georgia because I've really seen that this last um, couple of years yeah. because you know I, I set up my coaching practice in 2009 so what's that 13 years ago now um and have been been a coach leadership coach work with we worked all over the world and everything and um I always felt like I worked hard I worked hard to make all that happen and and to be perfectly honest none of the clients came from the effort they always came from somewhere left a field like you know you didn't you, you just really didn't know where the clients were coming from um so you know I, I learned to to do things that made sense to me but when the publishing company started like I was saying to, to Steph beforehand like it was a complete surprise to me like I had never planned to start a publishing company and when the pandemic hit and my work dropped off the cliff like we worked out we 96 percent of our turnover because my husband and I worked together just gone in a week like we were set in January we were saying it just just with what we've got in, in the books already we're going to have our best year ever and Ash has been in business 25 years and then March the whole lot gone now if I'd have listened to this like I'd have been marketing, trying to find clients because this was going, you've got to make up this 96%. Where are you going to get the money from? Da, 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 da. Do the, do the marketing, do the marketing. Something else said, write something and post it on social media. I didn't know I was writing a book. And, and, so all I was doing was it made sense to me every day to write something and put it on social media, write something and put it on social media. And this was doing this, like, what are you doing? Wasting your time writing when you should be out there getting clients, where are you going to get the money from? And then there was a point where I thought, oh, this is a book. And, and, I, and I carried on writing. I thought, oh, well, that's interesting. I'll see where it goes. And then I decided to self-publish it. I decided, did I decide? I know, you know, so, so I had the thought, oh, I'll self-publish the book. And so I said yes to the nudge. So I self-published the book and then I made such a mess of it, of, of going about it and made so many mistakes. I thought, I'm going to do this little video on Facebook Live to just to tell, just for fun, to tell people about all the mistakes that I made. And then at some point in a class with Jules, Jules said, oh, Maria, Maria's going to start a publishing company. <laughs> oh, yes, I am. That is the first I'd heard of it. The, the absolute first I'd heard of it. But it, it, there was something about it that just made perfect sense. And then there was all the noise. I, you don't know anything about publishing apart from having one book published by a traditional publishing company and one self-published book but but what what's been really gorgeous about that is that that all started with no 
effort whatsoever like people were coming to me people were asking me for help with the writing and help with the books and then I thought oh you know I'll try this program I'll put a program together and see what happens I put a program together and some people come on and oh that was really nice and and then I had a point where I started to feel I really started to feel pressured and what I realized is that I'd gone from following the nudges to oh my god I need to do this I need to do that if I'm going to make this publishing company where I need to do this and I need to do that and I need to be advertising and I need to marketing and I need to SEO and I need to do this and then all of a sudden I was like ah this all happened with no effort like I didn't make it happen so let's come back from thinking I'm in control of everything and come back to just following what makes sense in the moment and it and it's carried on beautifully and in comparison like my leadership work in comparison felt like pushing a rock uphill whereas this just feels like most of the time not all of the time most of the time like I'm, I'm, you know, floating, going along with the flow of the river. Mm. Susanna. Yeah, again, very powerful. Thank you, Maria. And, and uh, you know, not in a coaching context, but reflecting on my own kind of transition points in life uh, after redundancy in 2015, uh, where I just felt for the first time in my life as if it was completely out of control. I had no idea where I was going. Um, and I had a really weird year, really weird year. You know, there was no logic or reason in my conscious mind mm -hmm. about why opportunities were appearing, why I was choosing particular things on the surface. A lot of stuff was completely out of character <laughs> from what I would normally do. And during that year, you know, I started referring to this phrase, follow the energy. You know, people would be like, what are you doing? And I just like, I don't know. I'm just following the energy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then it, but then in a, in a work context, kind of with teams, and, and I'd like to ask you a question related to this, because when I work with teams, again, they used to laugh at me at Sainsbury's Tech when I was talking about this because I'd bang on all the time, you know, about the, the whole flow state thing. And, you know, what you've described there as well, I think is quite a fundamental cornerstone, right, you know, to being able to get into and participate in that kind of flow state. So I'm quite interested, given what you've experienced and what you're talking about there, in a team coaching context, for example, how do you think we can actually instill that kind of trust in that process in people? Because it's very scary for a lot of people, right? So the, the first thing that comes to mind for me is like, we don't instill it in them. They, yeah. already, they already have it. Yes, good point. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I'm really blessed that Ash and I work with teams and we work with leadership teams. And we, we come from, and I know you're from a, the coaching world, so you, I don't know whether you know anything about, you know, this is a three principles global community, whether the, the, there's um, a guy called Sydney Banks who come up with these three principles about, basically about how life works. And it's very, very simple, uh, very simple understanding. And it's, it's just seeing, seeing that helped me to um, be more present in my own life, um, be more feel more connected to to who I really am without it being distorted by all the stuff that goes on in our heads and it's knowing that every single person that we work with regardless of how it looks from the outside has access to a source of wisdom that um, can seem clouded at some times so um, before we start doing any kind of um, um, practical work with individuals we really we slow everything down and we help them to get their mind settled and as their mind gets settled and they fall into a calmer place then they start to be able to have more clarity and for me it's 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 as simple as that and we could spend hours doing that 
Thank you. Not, not necessarily something that, thank you, Sue. Um, not necessarily something that, um, you know, that happens in a, in a few minutes. And we'll talk about state of mind and we'll talk about, you know, having a, um, a, a place within us that is always okay. And we'll talk about, we, we use a snow globe metaphor and we'll talk about the snow globe and how um, when the snow globe settles, then we have more clarity. And, and so all of our work with leadership teams always starts with um, finding a calm place um, and knowing that we have this wisdom and seeing the difference between being in our heads and coming from a, a calmer place. I mean, it's a, it's a, very, a very, very quick um, um, answer to something that is, um, you know, takes more, takes more doing in the moment, I suppose, but. Mm, that's oh, fascinating. Thanks, Maria. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, so, so a lot of the, the leadership work that Ash and I do with with leadership teams, that's that's we start from that place. Is this this understanding of who we are at the heart of of everything? That um, you know, it's our state of mind. That state of mind is the thing that has the biggest impact on leadership. And the more that they can come from a quiet state of mind, um, the, the, the better leaders that they are, the better decisions that they'll be able to make, the more creativity that comes through them. So we're always pointing people. This is like, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm working with somebody writing a book, working with a leadership team or working with a coach, I'm always pointing people back to this calmer, quieter place within them where they can get their clarity from. Divya. Yeah, uh, that's so wisely put in, in the sense, uh, when I first came to know of you in 2019 West Midland Coaching Conference, you introduce yourself in terms of years back in corporate world, uh, you were a very different person, which I cannot even visualize in terms of all the noise going in and you describe. So for me, uh, seeing you as you are today and your presence, which we can feel virtually as well, is such is so motivational and inspiring. And it just motivates me to know more about three principles as well. But it's just, if you can have that journey, it's just quite motivational to take that journey as well. So thank you for being such a role model. Oh, thank you. And the, the truth is, like, if, if, if it can happen for me, it can happen for anybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going with that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Can I just have a look at, at was there anything in here that... Um... looking at some of the things that... yes perfect so thank you bernie um i love this phrase it's just a single a single line in here finding wisdom has nothing to do with time so i, I really want to say this divya and susanna especially and georgie you're probably the same because you you're probably so much younger than i am um like um like I was, I, it was after my 50th birthday that I came across uh, this and, and this made a difference to my life. But one of the things I've really seen working with people is that it's got nothing to do with my age. And like, you're so much younger than me, like you don't have to wait until you're 50 to be able to, to experience life the way that I feel in. Um, that, um, you know, you regardless of age you have your own wisdom you have your own guide um and you know it's like if you can if, if like this is my wish for the world it's like if, if you can find peace earlier in life compared to me then then you know if any one person finds peace earlier than me then that's a blessing um, and it's it's absolutely possible and it doesn't mean that you know, you don't experience life's ups and downs, you know, you don't get caught up. And, you know, you saw me at the beginning of the of the call, 
like there was you know something was going on for me and I couldn't quite put put words to it but the feeling it wasn't such a great feeling some of that old stuff just kind of agitating a little bit just reminding me giving me some giving me some food for conversation you know it it's like that that feeling that I was experiencing earlier might have just been wisdom in action giving me something to talk about today so it doesn't make it a negative that doesn't make that few minutes when I was when I was you know there's a little bit of turmoil going on doesn't make that a a negative experience actually um, it's given me something to talk about so and that you know that one of the things for me is really like no matter what happens you know I had that I mentioned a period of three and a half months off work when I felt like I was in a completely dark place you know coming through that um, is is um you know change my life because I was completely through going what through going through that I learned something about myself that enabled me to be different in life afterwards so then it's like you know that dark period what if it was wisdom that brought that and when I talk about wisdom I don't mean you know we often talk about wisdom as being like wise words so so when I'm talking about wisdom, it's more a, an energy. Who talked about energy? You, Susanna, you talked about energy. It's it's like a it's a source rather than like for me, I, I'm really struggling now with the words here. So wisdom is not words. Um And so we it, we come from we come from a place of wisdom, rather than we become wise. And that place of wisdom, we have it whether we're three years old, whether we're twenty years old, or whether we're sixty years old. And so, um, when you when you focus your attention more on that part of ourselves this is what happened for me the more that I saw that that there was something within me that guided me the much more I was able to trust it in life and and writing this book has just really helped me with that even more because I've written about so many times where I've been guided by life not realizing that I was being guided by it being guided by it regardless and then it it's like who's to say what's the negative stuff and what's the good stuff in a way because some of the things that we would label as negative when you look back in hindsight if that hadn't have happened we wouldn't be where we are where we are now so like you know I had my share of not good relationships but if I hadn't have had those not good relationships I probably wouldn't be in the relationship that I'm in now. Steph and I said that um, we'd be happy to go to a quarter past or we're happy to stop at whatever point. I've loved this completely. It's exactly what I needed this evening thank you so much I'm going to go and run my daughter's bath and have a really oh, good nice. thing about everything you've shared thank, thank you, you so much you, Susanna you Yay. take care bye. Right. Bye. bye bye I just wanted to touch on uh by the end of your speech you mentioned a lot about good life I mean, at that time, I had this link where you said, mentioned something about negativity and a really good life and good life. And I wondered, how do you define or what is a good life for you? Good question. I think for me, having a good life is just about being 
contented mm. and at peace. I think that there's not much else, <laughs> really not much else at all. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't mean good things are happening all the time. Uh, it doesn't mean, I don't know, you know, making lots of money or, you know, it doesn't mean that my book gets published and sells a million copies. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, you know, I've really, really, really enjoyed the process of writing the book. And it, it might go out in the world and one person might read it. And it's like, I don't mind. I don't mind. I mean, if one person reads it and it makes a difference to them, that's great. The thing that I really want in my life is, is peace. And, it, and it's peace in here, peace in here. I mean, I'd love peace in the world. I'd love peace in the world as well. You know, I wish everybody could, could see and, and have a peaceful mind. Um, but yeah, I would say, and that that's the thing. It's like, you know, when people are in a really negative feeling and all they want is to feel happy and contented and peaceful. And then the second they get into a happy, peaceful state, I think we've probably mentioned this in, in our conversations before, they don't even notice it because it's so ordinary. I think that's, so yeah, I just want to feel ordinary. <laughs> Because in, 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 in the ordinary, it's like that's when, when I feel ordinary, when life feels ordinary, that's when I'm contented, that's when I'm at peace. I haven't got agitation or frustration or noise. So just, yeah, in the, in the ordinary moments. But the ordinary moments are like, I really value them. Like people don't value the ordinary moments and they're so special because they're exactly what we're crying out for when we're in a negative state. We're crying out for, to, to be peaceful and then we don't even notice it when we are. That's really beautiful. I recall during COVID times and like for ages, I was always thinking, um, I take, I'm so disciplined. I take so much care of my life and, um, I don't have to take medicines and I'm like all okay, but it was so ordinary. <laughs> it's only when people started thinking, you know, if you're all well, that's actually a good thing. Uh, and it just to be like ordinary is beautiful, which I didn't realize until COVID. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and it goes in so many different aspects of life. And Thank you for um, helping me remember that. Really good point, Divya. Like, that's all I'm doing. If I'm, if I'm having any benefit in the world, I'm helping people to remember what they already know. Georgia? Interesting what you say, Divya, because COVID, all my three children came home for the first time in 13 years. They were all together. And it was fascinating because I've always gone, that was a really special time. Nice. But actually, we did absolutely nothing because we didn't go anywhere. We just ate dinner. They worked. I potted in the garden. It was the most ordinary time that I have always described as really special, but it never occurred to me before that actually, yes, it was so frigging ordinary. <laughs> Couldn't have got more ordinary because nobody did anything, but it was absolutely beautifully exquisite and a gift from heaven. Mm. Thank you. What a great place to stop, I think. <laughs> the beautiful feeling thank you so much maria i love your story i love the i love the honesty of just wow i'm surprised that i'm doing this publishing thing now how 
<laughs> it's delightful. <laughs> oh it's my kind goodness. Of like, you know, when we say it sometimes, do you think, you know, and I am, I've just had a conversation with somebody before, before this call where, you know, she's saying, you know, I really want, you know, you, your expertise and you've done this and you've done that. And I'm going, nah. <laughs> and, you know, when there's, I, I think previously I might have tried to bullshit it a bit, you know, because I'd be thinking, oh, you know, it can't be. I'm not going to be, they're not going to want to work with me if I, if I tell them that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but. No. Oh, oh, I would. Cause I know what emerges from that <laughs> is genius is bigger than all of us is amazing. So, oh goodness. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad we were here today. Thank you everyone for coming. Yeah, and um, I'm going to put in a quick invitation for next month's practitioner webinar as well. Uh, we'll be with Jackie Ford on July the 12th, nice. um, 2 p.m. Eastern. She's going to be talking about, we all have blind spots. So that one sounds oh, juicy yes. too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Wow. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening, wherever you might be. Thank you so much Thank for being you. here. Thank you. Bye. Bye.